Good morning, YouTube. I'm back. Um, it is currently Friday morning, and I'm on my way to my first job. But I'm going to record my video for yesterday, which is Thursday, 24th of August. Um, and before I start, I am having I am having some problems with uploading my videos. So for the last two videos, it's taken me. My phone has taken about 24 hours to upload the video. I have no idea what's going on. I've looked at a few quick solutions, but I don't know enough about these things. So it actually took my video from Wednesday, from Wednesday night to this morning to download. 36 hours or thereabouts. Um, quite frustrating from my point of view, but really it doesn't really matter in the long scheme because it just means that my videos are delayed by a day, which isn't necessarily going to be too much of a big deal. But I'm going to make this one a bit shorter, so maybe that will help with the upload times. So for yesterday, I did have a job in the morning. I was looking on the feed from quite early, and eventually a job came up on the CX from a shipper that I... Um, worked for before who's local to me and I put a bid on and I was reasonably confident I'd get it because if I put a bid on that's um, competitive, not necessarily the lowest but competitive, I will get the jobs from this from this guy, which I do appreciate. And it was a job going from Wisbeach to Newmarket, or just or sort of that, that area, not quite in Newmarket, but between, I think it might be Fordham actually. Um, and so I picked up that load and it's about an hour and ten minutes delivery time I was about 45 minutes away from the pickup um, so nice and easy short job to get started off with and then I made my way to drop off and I was finished at about half past ten and then I was looking at jobs to come well go anywhere else and there wasn't really much around but then the job came up about half an hour later um, maybe it was half past 11 I got there yeah it must be half past 11 um, but came up about half an hour later about 12ish and it was a one o'clock pickup from West Beach to go to Hull it happened to be the same shipper from this morning. So I put on a bid that was enough money to get me back from Newmark on Fordham to this beach, which is about an hour and five minutes journey. And then I put on a bid for the job itself. And I thought I probably won't get it because of the cost, because I know that there's the margins are quite tight in these jobs. Um, but you know, I am he did because he knows me, I think if, I, if it's affordable, he'll give it to me. So I put a bit on, not thinking, not thinking I'd get it because I'm so far away. And it was a large, no, I said that wrong, didn't I? Sorry, Peter. It was a long wheelbase vehicle. Oh, I'm going to get that wrong all the time. It was a long wheelbase job. Um, and uh, I got that, and I got it. Yeah, so I made my way from where I was back to, towards Woods Beach. Um, it's somewhere I've been before, um, it's a distribution place, um, I knew the procedures, um, the guys there can be a bit hit and miss with their attitude to you, but I just go in really highly polite and uh, cheerful and it tends to work out. And they said to me when I got to the desk, just do, you've got three pallets, make sure you tell the forklift that. There's one outside, two on the inside. So I did instruct it, and the forklift driver was, oh yeah, I've got those, they're all ready. So he put on three pallets, and then I skid them all, and then made my way. Oh yeah, so actually with a little note for new people in particular. Um, I So th these were um, so wooden pallets, and then above the wooden pallets, I had boxes. Um, and, they were quite, and they were quite heavy. I looked at the labels, and they were 360 kilograms each for the box for the, for the pallets so there's probably about 
30 boxes on each pallet um, and um, they're all then cellophaned to the pallet. Now what I've found with these kinds of loads where you've got cellophaned, heavy items cellophaned to the pallet is they are liable to move because the, the cellophane is not strong enough basically. Um, and so I have in the past had real problems with these sort of things. And so I saw these today and I thought, oh, this is one of those again where they, they mass a big heavy load and cellophane pallets. So I secured the, every single pallet down with a single strap over the top. So um, over the top of the load, pulled quite tight. I just hoped that would be enough. Um, there wasn't really any space, after I put three pallets in, there wasn't any space for me to do any other sort of securing because you have to get between the pallets and there was not much space. So I just hoped, I, was, and I, I just drove really carefully. Ra it's round the roundabouts that's the problem. When you're going right or when you're going right around the roundabout, um, I just go really slowly when I get this sort of load on. Anyway, so I got those loads on and I, went, and I made my way up to Hull. And about halfway up, I did um, stop for a wee and checked my loads and I checked very carefully had they all any of them moved. And I didn't think they had, so they all looked like they were secure. So I was quite pleased that um, they were in the same place. But I did tighten my straps. So another thing that I found out is that. Over with those sort of big pallets, the straps can, with a little bit of movement, get a little bit looser from when you first put them on. So I think I would recommend, or at least I'm going to do for myself, for a long for, for, for stuff with heavy pallets, is just at some point, maybe after an hour or so, check and secure more tightly the straps. Um, so I remember went to a hole, and I just I was literally on the road turning into the road that I was going to deliver to. I got a call from the shipper saying, oh, there may be a problem with this load. Can you just tell me, or oh, take a photo of the label so we can get the customer to check they've got the right thing on. And um, because it's a, a chipper I know and I trust him, I had no problems with, I wasn't worried at all about um, anything that happened because if there was a mistake, I'd have to go back and I'm sure he would pay me for it. So um, I did send him a photo. I was on the phone for him for a bit. Um, he did say to me, um, and I can see the why he said this, that he was really glad that he had someone who spoke good English, because trying to explain something like this to someone who had very poor English would be very difficult. They wouldn't really understand what they were asking. Um, you know, just taking a parcel from A to B, you don't need great English skills, but when things go wrong and you have to explain something to a ship or a ship explains something to you, you do need to be able to speak reasonably good English to understand what you're being asked to do. Anyway, so he did, uh, I did, did that for him. I, I asked him if he wanted me to wait before I load it because I was literally uh, around the corner from the, from the uh, place I was delivering to. He did ask me to wait. I was there for about five minutes and then he rang back and said, it's okay, they're all the right stuff. So no problems. But he, I think, appreciated me just you know, being helpful and professional in that moment. So I went round, got to security gate, Explain what I was there for. He's directed me to the right place. Um, another thing I've found, for, for if you're new to this job, another thing I've found is um, the first time you go on most sites, they're all a little bit different, and you might think that the goods in is you know, always easy, easy, easy to find, or the dispatch office is easy to find. It isn't. You just have to ask someone on the site, and then you'll, you'll, you'll be given there. The problem is if there's no one on the site. So if you're out of hours or you cut, there's no phone call to ring, then you really kind of have to just search and knock on windows and sort of maybe ask neighbours. But what I was meant to say here was that now I've been to this site, I know exactly where to go. So I spent probably three or four minutes trying to find the right window. And I found the right window eventually, and then eventually found got someone to help me to, to unload. But next time I go to that site, as I come to the gate, I remember it. Oh, I know exactly where I'm going to go now. So the more you do this job, the more times you go to these places, you will, the second time you go, you'll know exactly where you're going to go. So you're saving a time um, each time you go. So it's just with experience, not just, you don't, know, you don't just experience, you don't just gain knowledge of how to do the job. You just gain things like, where is the goods in? Where is, is it one way? Is it not one way? You know, uh, should I, should I, be, should I, can I park here or should I park there? You, you, that experience is invaluable with this sort of job. It just saves you three or four minutes here or there 
saves you a bit of stress, a bit of worry. Um, so the longer you do this job, I think there is an element of that kind of experience making the job easier for you, as well as all the other reasons why it gets easier. Okay, so I got unloaded and then I parked up, did my paperwork and looked for a job and there was absolutely nothing. And I wasn't surprised. It was it was about quarter past five by this point by the time I was unloaded. And I wasn't expecting to, I was due, when I, when I got the job, I was due to get into Hull at quarter to five. And I thought, well, there's a slim chance that if I, if I, as I'm on my way, I can get a job that's really close to my drop point at five o'clock when I've unloaded. But that chance is so slim that I was expecting for this to be no, no more, more job. There to be no more jobs. Gosh. I was prepared to accept that, but I also wanted to just try it out. I wanted to spend the night, if I had to, in Hull and just see what's it like in the morning. Is it peeing with jobs? Are they, are they long wheelbase? long wheelbase jobs or short wheelbase jobs? Is it really quiet in the morning? So I, this is another thing of experience. Um, I want to kind of go into this a little bit. Um, before you start, one of the questions that newbies will ask someone is where's the best areas to deliver to? And there are the kind of classic areas, but I'm always reluctant to think there is good or bad areas because I think it's down to your own personal experience. I've been to the northeast probably three times, I would say, um, in, in the six months I've been doing this job. And I don't feel um, that it's been hard to get out of the northeast. But if I'd been once and the first time had been, I'd been stuck for half a day, I'd have a different impression of the northeast. And that could easily happen, it happened to anyone. Um, I've come to Hull for this probably the third time again maybe second time and the first time I got a job out but I had to travel a bit and it's it during the day and this is the first time I've come here and tramped overnight so I know that there are jobs I've got a job I've got a job this morning so getting a job wasn't that hard this morning so I wouldn't be um, afraid I suppose is the wrong, wrong word to, to come to Hull in the future and tramp out because I know I'll probably get a job the following day. But it might have been that I came on a day and I got, there's nothing, it's really quiet. So just because I've done this once doesn't mean it's always going to be this easy. And vice versa, if I come and it's not quite, if it's quiet. Because the other factors are, you have to bear in mind, I'm one person, I'm going to a place, perhaps in the year, I might go to a place like this five or six times. and. Each time I go, it's a different part of the year. So an August, like it is today, an August um, day might be different to a, a May day or a December day. So it may be very different because it's a lot better or a lot worse. It may be that because it's a Friday, I happen to catch it this morning because they want to get stuff out. But maybe if I came here on a Thursday morning, it wouldn't be the same. So I'm very reluctant to say that there's an area that's really good or really bad. I think it's much more down to other factors, you know, every, any area can be good or bad on a particular day. Um, you know, what time of day are you there? What uh, day are you there? What time of year are you there? What kind of van are you driving? What um, bit, what bids are you putting on? What, how, how many other people are there at the time? And obviously, some of those factors will depend will always depend on the area. Uh, another example I want to give is um, Manchester, Birmingham, London in particular. I kind of thought get myself to those areas and I'll always get a job. But I have found, because it's so popular with other drivers, that actually it's not that easy to get jobs at the price that I want. So they're not necessarily good areas for me, but they might be for other people. If you live in those areas, I'm sure you make a great living because there's lots of business and you know the market. So I, there's a long way of saying, I can't give you an answer to the question, which is the best area. I think it's, not kind of question that has a simple answer um, because it, because I'm a single person doing this for a short amount of time I haven't got that much experience and even if I've been doing it for five or ten years I might I might, I might have been let's say, I, cause I, let's say I come to Hull 50 times in the next five years well in five years time 
what, uh, what I think about Hull might change massively from now. So, so how, how's to, who's to say that if I have I say, actually Hull is really quite quiet, so suddenly I've missed a, a, a trend that's happening that's about to explode in Hull. So yeah, so I think it's not, oh, I'm in the wrong lane. Oh, I hope I don't get beat, beat here. Yeah, and I'll put my hazards on now to thank that person behind me for letting me in. Thank you, driver. Right, um, so where was I? Um, did I tell you prices? I can't think of, I can't if I did. Um, no, I don't think I did, did I? My first, my first job was 60 pounds, and my second job was 140 pounds. So let me give you my stats for yesterday. They are as follows. I had, a, I had a short day, which is quite unusual. Um, so seven and three quarter hours day. It was 209 miles, 209. My um, fuel for this week, 15.67 uh, pence per mile. That meant that I spent 35 pounds, 27 pence. And so my um, net earnings, oh, so my gross earnings was 200 pounds, 60 pounds, 140 pounds, and that means my net earnings was 165 pounds for yesterday. Um, so a below target, but I have got today to try and make up for that, and um, we'll see how it goes. So, it was, so basically, yesterday was a quiet day, it was a short day, and it wasn't necessarily the best day, but I'm not going to worry about it because I've got the whole week to look at. So, and also it's about learning about Hull and, you know, what sort of jobs work. So it's every, every day, as, as they say, is a school day. <laughs> I don't like that phrase, to be honest. Um, I'll tell you why. I used to be a teacher, so don't mention schools to me. And secondly, um, I'm, every day is, I, I learn every day. Learn, learning is the word, isn't it? It means, it means the same thing, but I just don't like that particular word. <laughs> okay, I'm, going to, I'm keeping this video shorter because of the upload time. I feel that I'm rushing this end bit because of that. Um, I'm on 17 minutes at the moment. I'm just trying to think Oh yes, I will tell you an update of my subscriber um, numbers because that has changed recently. Um, as of today, I've got 131 subscribers. So it is creeping up. Thank you very much for those extra, I think it's five people that have joined in the last week or so. Um, oh yes, and so I'll tell you about today. I'm on my way to a job at the moment, um, just outside of Hull. But I'll tell you about that at the end of today. See how kind of today goes, and I'll try and remember: long, not large; short, not small. But I'm going to get that wrong, I know. But you know what I mean. You're forgiving. You're a forgiving bunch. <laughs> have a great day, and I shall speak to you later. What have you learnt today?